Magic the Gathering players. It looks like it's that time again. Uh, it's time to talk about the reserve list. And I just recently bought some uh, reserve list cards and some older Four Horsemen stuff. And a little bit, you know, here and there. Um, I bought this off a gentleman. Uh, he gave me, you know, he went back and forth about the price. But I did end up getting a, a reasonable price for these. So I wanted to go ahead and add my position of both reserve list stuff and some of the old... Uh, original, you know, Four Horsemen style set. So uh, we can go ahead and dive into some of these. And I want to have a little conversation here about the reserve list. So, you know, um, you know, as a player of Magic, I can say this. And I'm, I'm in two places about it. It's the conversation that no one wants to have, but the conversation that everybody has. It's literally, you know, there's a lot of cards on the reserve list that I wish I could have. You know, a lot more dual lands. Gaia's Cradle, for example, um, you know, there's, there's a whole long list of things that would really add to my collection or make add to my decks for crying out loud. I could do some really amazing things with all that stuff or have at least access to some of those dual lands. Um, in a way, Wizards has been kind of dancing around it a little bit. Um, they haven't reprinted reserve lists, but there are cards that are, have functional similarities, you know. Uh, a good example for Commander, the... Um, uh, the, uh, battle bond lands, like, uh, Morphic Pool, I think, and there's a few other ones, I just can't think of them off the top of my head, but those cards, um, they come into play untapped, you can tap them for either or mana, the only difference is you can't fetch those, you know, they're unfetchable, and, you know, that's not as good as, let's say, having an original revised or unlimited dual land or something, um, which those cards are hundreds of dollars, you know, I have a few, I don't know how to mean, I wish I had more, it's just a matter of money. I can't afford that kind of thing. But, um, you know, the conversation we want to have here is that the reserve list, it really is, um, for some people, it's a big advantage. So if you're a collector and you've been holding on to these and maybe you bought your car for $20, maybe it's worth $100 now or $200 even. I've seen prices jump in the last five years like 10 times what they were just in 2016. So... Um, if you follow where I'm going with this, um, you know, I really think that the reserve list is going to stay. First of all, um, uh, was it Mark Rosewater recently went ahead and made a sort of statement about it saying it's not really going anywhere. Don't expect it to go anywhere anytime soon. So as far as like investors and collectors go, you're going to continue to see people buy this stuff out and then until it's just gone, it's just going to disappear and It'll still be there, but it'll be so expensive that, um, you know, newer players won't be able to really get in, get the reserve list cards, uh, unless they're wealthy, of course. But I can say that Wizards is doing a lot of functional, similar reprints in these days. So, you know, I think, what was that? There's a card in um, Ixalan that turns into Ga to Gaia's Cradle. You have to flip it. Uh, I think, like, search for as as Cantor, some kind of... Something of that nature. I know it's one of those cards in Exilan that you do whatever's on the card, it flips over, and then you can basically tap it for, you know, like Gaia's Cradle. Um, and, you know, some of the cards, you know, like Sarah's Sanctum, you know, tap it, uh, get a, a white mana for each enchantment in play. Those are great, you know. Those are in iconic cards from a time period in Magic's history where... You know, it kind of the, the formative years with the hobby, the game, all of it was just coming together and there were tournaments and Wizards honestly actually cared about their player base and made a lot of, um, you know, really good cards and things like that. So I guess what I'm going to do here is uh, we'll go ahead and review some of these guys here um, on this list. Um, it's a pile of cards, excuse me. So let's go ahead and take a dive right into them. So the first one I've got here is, uh, again, it's just a dark card. Um, uh, I don't believe this is on the reserve list. I, I don't think so, but it's, um, you know, just from the dark. So I figured to add it to my collection of, uh, dark, uh, uncommons and rares and things. So nothing too impressive about what it does. It's an old artifact from the dark. Um, again, I think this is a common, uh, but it's an old artifact from the dark. They have reprinted a lot of these in like Chronicles and fourth editions and stuff from the old days. But I noticed that a lot of these original, printings and this style is really starting to go up so I've been um acquiring these as I could get a hold of them and right now they're rather inexpensive so maybe now is the time to get a position in some of these 
you know, I think as a player, you know, getting these for a couple dollars a piece or a few dollars or five dollars or whatever, depending on what it is, it's, it's probably worth it. I mean, a lot of these are worth like not even a dollar, some of them, depending on condition. Um, Wand of Ith, you know, sort of a, a giant wall of text card. I am not going to torture you guys or reading all that, but if you want to pause the video and see what Wand of Ith does, you can kind of see that. Um, we got this guy, Skull of Orm. You can bring one enchantment card from your graveyard to hand, but it costs five mana. I mean, it's three to get out, five to, and then tap. I, you know, probably not going to see a lot of play anytime soon, but more of a collectible at this point. Like, these kind of cards... They just get put in, um, you know, bulk collections to kind of see where it goes someday. Or maybe use it for trade on something else someday. You never know. Um, Book of Rass. Uh, you pay two, or well, it costs six to get out. You pay two uh, and two life uh, and draw one card. It's a lot to draw a card, though. Six and then that. I, I you know, I, I don't think that's going to be a, a game winner anytime soon. Now, this guy gets a lot of use. Um, Tormod's Crib. Um, sacrifice the Crypt to remove all cards from target player's graveyard from the, gra from the game. Um, eventually, what they did was I think they replaced this with a land. Um, but Jukabog does that. And then there's like um, a couple of other cards that you can sack it. Um, the Graft dig Digger's Cage or something like that. So you can, uh, you can cause people to sack their whole graveyard. So there's been functional reprints of this. But this is the OG, as they say, the original that did that kind of thing. So, really good old card to have. Now, we're going to get into some of the, the bigger cards, we'll just say. Um, again, a lot of these are reserve lists. So, um, he was trying to price and sell them, but he decided he didn't want to sell them online. Uh, me and him negotiated for the whole group of cards. So, let's uh, just dive into these. There's some good stuff in here, guys. So, now... <laughs> These are Italian, but they are reserve lists. So I was like, well, I got them at a better price than what I would have paid if these were in English. Uh, this one is in is a Concordant Crossroads. Um, obviously, I, I can't read Italian. I could attempt to try this out. Situazioni Favorioli or something. I <laughs> well, I know it's Concordant Crossroads. You know, it's a good good old card. I mean, it's easy to just go ahead and oracle the text on that card and see what it does if you really, really need to do that. But um, I these have been going up a lot in the last year or two, and I, I don't know if I can afford an English version, but this one I was able to get, pick up at a good price, and it's also a reserve list card, so you won't see that coming out too soon. Um, I have a bunch of Wastelands already. This is not reserve list, I don't believe, but... It is the original printing. It's a it's a classic card. You know, it's got its uses. You can destroy uh, someone's non-basic. Uh, it's the original non-basic destroy land. So a lot of people... Uh, one time this card before reprinting was up to over $100. It's probably like 30 bucks now. So it's pretty cool. Winding Canyons. Um, you can add one colorless mana to your mana pool. Or pay two until end of turn. You may play creature cards whenever you could play instant. So you can play that, obviously, on other people's turn. So that's really useful. Um, you know what? I love it. For some crazy reason, I love this uh, Scorched Ruins card. Um, again, I have a feeling one of my... It, because it um, adds four colorless mana to your mana pool, a lot of colorless style death can benefit greatly from this card. Um, just because of what you can do with it, not just colorless, but artifacts and anything like that. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I've always been a fan of this. I was buying them when they were $5. I bought it when it was $10. I bought it when it was $15. I think I paid a little more than that for this one, but I'm going to keep buying these because it is a reserve list card, number one. And the four man, colorless mana, I don't think there's another magic card land that does this. But I, you know, I just don't think there is one. Yes, you sacrifice your two land, untapped lands, but at the same time, you're ramping for four, 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 four every turn. So that's really helpful. And if you have a way to go get those lands back out of the graveyard, then you're, you're doing really good with that card. Um, we got this one. Um, I think this is Ring of the Immortals. Uh, again, it's in Italian. Um, I believe it is a reserve list card, or at least in, in Legends, you know, one of the four horsemen. So... I did not own this, uh, just like I didn't own Concordant Crossroads. I just didn't have one. And I figured, you know, there were some um, non-English in here, but I it came with the English. So I was like, well, 
I'll take them because I'm getting a better price for them and I'll add these to my collection. So we got a Ring of the Mortals there from Legends. Uh, Stang, I did not actually have Stang. It's an English one, so he's not worth a lot. He's more of a, I almost say like almost a meme. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if he's that great of a car. I don't even think he's reserve list, honestly. Um, he, he comes into play. You can create a, a green and red legend token. If you leave his play, you can remove uh, this the token from the game. Uh, but yeah, so he, you know, he's alright, I guess. But, you know, it's more of the fact that he's part of the Four Horsemen. And I think he might have been reprinted once in a master set somewhere. But whatever, you know. Uh, next we got Gravity Sphere. Uh, this would be a Italian Gravity Sphere. Uh, again, Legends Four Horsemen set. We're gonna go ahead and add that to uh, my position of Legends cards and things. Uh, this one uh, is Willow Sater. Again, an Italian. Um, again, I got a better price for these than what they really what they are in English. So I figured I would take advantage of it while I could. Um, I really, you know, it's a good card. I do have one English version of this that I pretty much don't even play with it anymore. It's just, it just stays in a, in a protector because it's, I think they've gone up too high to really, you know, I'd have to double sleeve it or build a whole deck with double sleeve just to make sure I don't mess it up. It's such good condition. Um, reverberation, da uh, damage from one sorcery spell is redirected to its caster. It costs four, I mean, I think there's better cards in this nowadays. But, um, you know, back in the day, this was probably a big deal. Uh, I do not, I'm not sure if this is on the reserve list, but it is for Horsemen. It is Legends. It's, we're going to go ahead and add that to the collection. Uh, this one I know was reprinted, I think, in Chronicles or 4th Edition, but again, original Legends copy. It's English. Um, he can't be blocked by Red Creature. Sacrifice one of your islands during your upkeep or it goes away. I, honestly... It's not a good card. I wouldn't put this in a deck, but, you know, um, it is going to go in the Legends collection, so it's good to have, again, more of these types of cards. Um, Desolation isn't really worth a lot right now, uh, but it has its uses. At the end of each turn, each player who tapped a lamb for mana during their during their turn sacrifices a lamb. If a planes is sacrificed this way, it deals two damage to the planes controller. So definitely an interesting type of card to throw in a... Um, uh, a mono black deck, I would think. Um, and you'd have to have a reason why you want to trash your lands. Like, I, you know, there's got to be a reason why you want to do that. And maybe when your land goes to the graveyard, there's a boon for doing that. Uh, Man of War checks is a dark card. Uh, each player who controls a land sacrifices one land during his or her upkeep. Um, if at any time there are no lands in play, uh, Mana Vortex is destroyed. If you do not sacrifice a land while Mana Vortex is cast, Mana Vortex is countered. Um, I would almost think you could almost play this in a Mana Rock, like, artifact style deck, where you don't need your lands, but you're wiping out everybody else's, so, you know, I think that's an interesting way to, to look at that one. I don't, I've never put this in a deck, and I, I wouldn't really build around this, but, I'm sure there's reasons to do it, you know. Uh, teleport. I think I have a few of these, but I wanted to get another one. I came with the collection, so I figured it was a good pickup while, you know, as far as the other cards go. Uh, target creature cannot be blocked until end of turn. Uh, play after attack is declared and before defense is chosen. It's three blue, so I guess a mono blue deck of some type, you'd want to put that in there. Nothing too crazy there. Uh, Baron. Now, this guy, I believe, is reserve list. You know, he's um, from Urza's Saga. I, honestly, um, I, I can see his uses. I mean, he counts as a wizard, so if you're doing wizard tribal, it's definitely a thing you want to throw in there. He's only three mana, so he can get out pretty easy. Um, you sacrifice a permanent, you can, you can return target creature to its owner's hand. So if you have a way to sacrifice stuff, like just create tokens and sacrifice them, um, you can bounce people's creatures pretty easily with this guy. Uh, next we got is Thought Lash. Uh, this would be from Alliances. Uh, it's got a cumulative upkeep, but uh, you remove the top card from your library, from the game. Uh, you pay zero to remove the top card of the library from your game and prevent one damage to you. So, um, I don't think this is going to get a lot of uses, but I think... 
I think this might be useful in the Thassa's Oracle deck. If you could pay the zero, you can do that as many times as you want. If you have the right card out and you have no library, if you just dump your library in your graveyard, you win the game. So I imagine there's a way to use this as a win con. I really see that as one of a piece to a com a combo piece to a win con or something. Uh, next we got Whim of Volrath. Nothing too crazy here. Exchange the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word uh, or basic land type with another until end of turn. So nothing too crazy, but yeah, it's a good little card to add. Uh, Sunder from um, again Urza Saga. Return all lands to owner's hands. Um, I don't know what to say about this card. Um, I'm sure there's a reason why you want to return everybody's lands. Um, it definitely does weird things to the game. Uh, again, I want to say artifacts or mana rocks. Like, if you want to really win... I guess a way to win the game is to just lock everybody out. If you have a ton of mana rocks and you're playing blue, so you play, what is it, Sky Diamond or something... And a bunch of rocks uh, that can give you the colored mana you need. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it and say this would be a really, a really mean thing to do the rest of the player. <laughs> because then they got to put them out one at a time. Oh, boy. And then their, la their hand is full of land. So that they don't have, like, an artifact. Like, um, what is it? Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. Mm, the one that allows you to have... Uh, I know I play the, anyway. The, um, it, it allows you to have unlimited hand size. If they don't have that artifact, then they've got to dump some of their cards at the end of their turn. It's it's brutal. That's just evil right there. I might put that in a deck just to see what I can do with it. It'll be an artifact build. Uh, mana Severance. Search your library for any number of land cards. Remove them from the game. Shuffle your library afterwards. Again, dumping lands in your graveyard. I, I don't know. I'm sure there's a reason to be doing this. Uh, and a deck type that allows you to go retrieve what you've dumped in your graveyard, like bring your graveyard on your t top of your library, who you knows, something like that. Uh, here's one I didn't have. Um, I tried to get one one time, and I got scammed on TCG Player, and never, never set the, the person never sent the card, and I had to dispute the charge. But I finally got one. I just didn't have this card. Uh, remove all cards in your library from the game. Shuffle your graveyard into your library. Interesting. Uh, I'm sure there's reasons to be doing that. Uh, but I did not have a copy of the card. So I did, it is a reserve list card that I wanted to try to get a hold of. I just never had a copy. Uh, Hidden Path. Uh, you can see what it does. All green creatures gain forest walk. So kind of expensive to do that. Six mana to give them all forest walk. I, I imagine there's better cards in this. Like Aladomri, Lord of Leaves, for example, cost two. Granted, Eladomri is a lot more expensive. Uh, if you're running an elf um, tribal deck and you run El Eladomri in there, I, he's got to be like 100 bucks, I think, or at least. This card, I do not believe is that much. I'm, maybe like 20, maybe t uh, 10 or 20. But the casting cost is very high. Now, nowadays, though, you can easily get that much green money and almost like on turn three or four nowadays, if that. You know, I've seen people get ramp up to like four green on turn two pretty easy. Um, you'd be surprised what you can do nowadays. So that card might have more viability now than it ever did in Magic, as far as, like, Magic history goes. Um, or even cheat it out some way, just put enchantment in a play or something. Um, Wormwood Tree Folk, it, yeah, nothing too crazy here. It's just a little 4-4 four, four for 5 that you can add stuff to it. So give them a uh, Swamp or, or Forest Walk. Weather Seed Tree Folk, hmm. Eh, nothing too exciting here, but again, it's a card I didn't have from, um, what was this, Urza's, I got Urza's Saga, Urza's, uh, I think this is Destiny's, or, uh, the next set after Urza's Saga, so, um, okay, now we're gonna go to Eternal Flame, now this one is reserveless, uh, now it does an amount of damage to your opponents equal to the number of mountains you control, but it, it also does half that amount of damage to you, rounding up. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of where we're going. Urza's Legacy, that's what I was thinking. Urza's Legacy, Destiny, and, and Saga. Yep. So, you know, stuff's all stored in my brain, but sometimes it takes a minute to just dig it back out again. It's like trying to access, you know, files from a old hard drive or something. <laughs> it goes a little bit slower, I guess. I don't know. Um, Dance of the Dead, it's an old 
um, uh, Ice Age car. Uh, it's got a wall of text on it. It does some interesting things with stuff, and they come into play, and it's kind of... I wouldn't probably play this card in a deck, but I could see why a certain deck type would. You know, with ETB triggers, and then they come into play, and they go away, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is City of Shadows, I believe. Or no, wait, let's see. Citra de Andre. Okay. I could have sworn this is City of... No. Hmm. I thought I had City of Shadows here, unless it's a different art for this format. Nonetheless, um... Uh, it's obviously a uh, Italian version. Mm, Citra Dele Ombre. I I don't I don't know. I want to say it's I think this is City of Shadows, but the art's different on it. I swear mine is looks different than that. I have this card in English. I have two of these, but I don't think the art looks like that. Uh, next we got is Psychic Allergy. Again, another uh, dark card. I'm not going to read the text. You can, if you want to pause the video, you can check it out. Popper's Cage. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Bard's, Bard's Cage. I'm sorry. Um, uh, creature does not untap as normal during a controller's next untap step. So, it's got its uses. You know, I would, you know, I'd probably take off the sticker here. He, he, again, this guy was intending on selling these in some way or photographing them for eBay. But he decided to quit doing that and just sell them to me. Um, yeah, so it gives you, um, an untap ability on the card, so if you can, as far as an artifact goes, it has its uses, you know, I could see this, uh, if you have a lot of artifact and mana ramp and that, you could use this for a lot of things. Uh, again, another Italian card, this one, I believe is, um, Typhoon, uh, it actually looks almost like Typhoon, okay. Uh, it is on the reserve list, believe it or not, this is a reserve list card. Now, I did buy a bunch of these, uh, speculating on these at one point. I think I got about five or six of them, and they were like $10. And I think they're worth a lot more than 10 bucks now, so it came with the group, so I figured out, you know, it wasn't a bad end. I'm going to make an attempt to say this word. I think it's actually, believe it or not, like a, like a Norwegian or maybe a Swedish word, possibly. Uh, joke. Jokel hops, maybe Jokel hops. Am I saying that right, guys? You know, maybe there's someone on my channel that's from Norway or Sweden and can explain to me uh, what exactly this is. I'm guessing this might be like in the fjords, maybe when a maybe when a glacier like cat, you know, when the glaciers are actually like the ice comes off them and they drop into the water and they create like a tidal wave or something. Uh, it buries all artifacts, creatures, and land. So if you're trying to blow up someone's stuff i guess this is a good way to do it if you if you yourself don't have those things and this is pretty much like a board wipe that benefits you land tax it was a great it's just gonna go right in a deck i mean what else do you do with land tax throw it in a deck um this is a pretty inexpensive reserve list card believe it or not guys i was antiquities um i do have a bunch of these now i think i've got 10 or 10 or 15 of them I was only paying a few dollars for them back in the day, and I just kept getting them, and um, it's kind of a lockdown for artifacts. I don't play it very often, but it's it's kind of cool. It is reserve list, and it's probably just going to keep going up. I think she might be also on the reserve list. Um, she's just a 3-4 angel with, you know, with vigilance and flying. I don't see why this card is worth anything other than that it being on the reserve list, so... We got this one, uh, Reconnaissance. This is not on the reserve list. Uh, it has its uses, though. You can remove target attacking creature you control from combat and untap it. So you can attack or you can block, but you can pay zero and then to remove it and keep your guy alive, I believe. Just remove it from combat completely. I think that's kind of cool. Some interesting stuff that, that I think you could shenanigans that. Blood Moon, honestly, I don't need one. I'll probably... You know, it's a reprint. This is a Chronicles reprint of Blood Moon. So I'm like, I don't need another Blood Moon. It only works in really red heavy decks. I'm probably going to sell it. So, I, you know, I might just sell that one because I really don't need another Blood Moon. I've got plenty. Um, Spinal Villain. This is again from Legends. Um, I did not have this card. So this was a good ad that uh, filled out an empty slot of my Legends collection. So it's good to have it. Believe it or not, this little green, well, I guess he's red, but he's uh, green mana for two. 
You gain one life whenever one of your opponent's artifacts becomes tapped, or whenever the activation cost of one of your opponent's artifacts is paid. It is not triggered by continuous artifacts. It's only two. Um, it is an enchantment, but it's got a, I think it's a leech or something on it. But this guy is actually on the reserve list. No joke. You know, he's actually worth something. He's, I would have never thought a card like this was on the reserve list, but apparently it is. And it's from antiquity, so it's good, good add to the collection. This guy is on the reserve list as well. Um, he gains plus one, plus one counter each time opponent casts an artifact. So, again, if you're playing against heavy artifact builds, then, well, there you go. You want to put him in there. Um, Spoils of Evil, I think this might also be on the reserve list from Ice Age. For each artifact or creature an opponent in an opponent's graveyard, you add one colorless mana to your mana pool and gain a life. Not bad, but it is an interrupt. So interrupts were basically the same as instants. They just changed the terminology to instants. Now, there was a rule variance between instants and interrupts. Like, I think in interrupts were technically a little faster than, in than instants, but then they errated that, so they're basically the same as an instant, as far as I know. Um, Oath of Ghouls. They're in each player's upkeep. If there are more creature cards in that player's graveyard than, than in target opponent's graveyard, the player may return a creature card from his or her graveyard to his or her hand. Um, this one, Oppression, whenever a player successfully casts a spell, that player chooses and discards a card. Kind of brutal if you're, uh, you know, like, especially if you're doing a lot of graveyard recursion. It doesn't really hurt you as much as it does other people that might, you know, have to discard some kind of combo piece or something important. Um, uh, Worms of the Earth, I believe this is on the reserve list. I, I, I believe so. I could be wrong, but it is a dark card, so I figured I would add it. Um, Eater of the Dead, again, it's another dark card. You can't even hardly see the logo, but there's the set symbol right there, Little Moon. Uh, we got, this one is on the reserve list, again, Haunting Wind. Uh, it used to be only like a few dollars. I think I've got a copy or two of this card, but, you know, it came with the collection, so, it, you know, another reserve list card is a good add. This is probably one of the cream of the crops of this collection, in that Gate to Phyrexia is most definitely on the reserve list. It has been going up over the last um, three, four years. I think this card was only like 30, 40 bucks, maybe three years ago. Now it's over 100. So definitely a good card to keep in the collection and watch it keep going up. So uh, Throne of Bone, another reserve list card. Uh, you can sacrifice a creature to look through your library for a creature card. You put that card in your hand after showing it to all their players or shuffle your library. Every so it's a tutor. But you have to sacrifice, sacrifice a creature to look through. So now keep in mind you can sacrifice a token and go get something nicer. So it's uh, you can sack a token, do this. It is a tutor. I mean, there are better tutors, tutors like Worldly Tutor and some of the other ones. But I, you know, it is a tutor. I uh, know this guy's text. If you've never seen this card, because it is very, very old, it comes from way back. Um, sacrifice one of your creatures during your upkeep to destroy any one artifact. You may not sacrifice a creature that is already on its way to the graveyard. So basically, um, you have a token heavy build, like uh, zombies, for example. Um, you're pumping out zombies, uh, token builds for zombies. And you sack a zombie and just blow up some of the soul ring or, or their mana rocks. And it's going to slow people down if you can blow up a lot of their um, um, their mana rocks and ramp. Um, okay. <laughs> this guy, Flag to Griff. Um, now, what I know about this card is that the title... Is actually a called an anagram where you mix up the letters. If you take this and put it back together, I think it's Garfield PhD. Um, for obviously, you know, he invented it, so he they made a card for him. The card is weird. I I think people have used this as a commander before, but I honestly wouldn't. I wouldn't use a commander as this guy, but. It's cute, and it's on the reserve list, believe it or not. This little hippo flying purple hippo thing, he's on the reserve list, believe it or not. You know, how about that, huh? Uh, I did not have Tetsuya Umizawa. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and add him in. He's definitely a good add to the collection, so now I've got him from Legends. It's a really useful card. Jester's Mask, I mean, you can see what it does. You pay one, you sacrifice the mask to look through a target opponent's hand and library. Give that player a new hand of as many cards as he or she had before. Reshuffle the remaining cards afterwards. 
Um, this is a pretty weird card. Look through target opponent's hand and library. Give that player a new hand of as many cards as he or she. Huh. It's kind of brutal. You can just take away some of the hand. You know? Uh, next we got this one here. Um, Lodestone Ball. Well, nothing too impressive there. It's an old Alliances card, but, you know, I didn't have it, so it added to the collection. I always like this card because if you have a, a, a deck where you have a lot of high-cost stuff or uh, five-color and stuff, you basically just put this out, pay the four, uh, choose a creature card from your hand, and put that creature into play. It's really good, you know? Really good stuff. Um, Lotus Battles. This is never gonna, not going to be a good card, so it's a good add to have in any collection. Grindstone. Uh, it's just a mill card. You can kind of read what it does as far as mill. Static Orb. Uh, players cannot untap more than two permanents during their untap phase. It just slows the game down. Uh, you put this out and then a Winter Orb and forget it. You're, you're, everyone at the table is going to walk away. <laughs> this is going to be a very long game of magic. Um, if Phyrexian Devourer's Power is 7 or greater, you can bury it. Uh, you can remove the top card of your library from the game and put a plus X plus X counter on this guy where X is equal to the card's casting cost. So you can pump them up really big. Um, you know, and there's probably a lot of ways to manipulate the stats on him. Stone Calendar on the reserve list. Um, it's been going up over years. I have, like, three or four copies of this, but it was a good add as part of this collection. I did not have this one, Anvil of Bogarden. Um, this card, uh, each player skips his or her discard phase. During each player's draw phase, that player draws an additional card and they ch and then chooses and discards a card. So it gives you some interesting card draw effects for two. Um, I didn't own this, and it's also, I believe, on the reserve list. And last couple, I'll skip this one for a second. I think you guys know what that does. Um, Rainbow Veil, vale, I believe, is on the reserve list. Um, it's not the best, most greatest card in the world, but... It's interesting for like a group hug deck maybe, or, and you're passing this thing around, or if you could enchant this land with something negative and make the, I don't know, there's probably a way to, to manipulate this thing. And last but not least is Scalding Tarn. You know, it came with the whole group, and I'm probably just going to sell this. I I think I already have like two or three of these, um, this particular one, Scalding Tarn, I just seem to like get a lot of these. One of the first um, expedition lands I got back in the first, the second time Zendikar got reprinted, they put in expeditions. Um, I think it was Zendikar Rising. That's the new one. It was uh, Zend, whatever. Anyway, so in that set, it was the first expedition card I pulled was a Scarlet uh, Foil Scalding Tarn expedition out of that that set, and then I got other Scalding Tarns from back in the original Zendikar. So I kept the OG one and the um, the Expedition one, then I pulled this as an Expedition foil when I opened the recent Zendikar Rising set, so yeah, um, that does it for that pile, now I did have one that I bought recently, not with this group, uh, it's another reserve list, it's the City of Solitude, uh, each player may play spells and abilities only during his or her turn, so it only costs three for green, uh, very useful card to put in a lot of decks, it keeps people from you know, uh, messing with your stuff. It keeps the, it keeps the, keeps the counters away, you know, it definitely helps you and especially if you're playing a deck where you don't want your stuff countered. Um, all right, so that does it guys. Um, again, reserve list. I don't, you know, again, I, there's some cards on there. I wish I could have them, but then again, I have a lot of reserve list cards and I can see that there's an investment in that and that you should, you know, it just is what it is, guys. It's a market. Anything that's in a market, is uh, the rarer it is in that market, the more it's going to go up in price, the more people are going to see, you know, want it for prestige or whatever reason they want to have it. You know, there's a lot of YouTube channels and some real whales out there, like Open Boosters, for example, or that, or Rudy and Alpha Investments and people that have way more money maybe than, you know, than anything else. And, they're just willing to spend, you know, to buy like 50 of these, for example, you know. This card's like maybe $20 right now, but, you know, eventually it'll be $100 and it won't be a, an obtainable card for regular people. So I try to get them when I can. Um, guys, I appreciate you um, watching my little uh, collection buy here. 
Uh, you know, please like and subscribe my channel. I do my best to try to provide some interesting magic related content, throw in a few other odds and ends now and then. Um, you know, by all means, you know, uh, I'm, I have a Patreon, so if you want to join in, uh, some cards I'm going to start putting up on the Patreon, like I might go ahead and just sell that on there to you guys and uh, give you a discounted price. I'll check the TC TCG player and, and see what it's going for. And I might just go ahead and put this up there because I already have one. So, um, great. It was been fun. Um, uh, there's going to be an, uh, there's another collection buy video coming soon. Uh, this one's huge. It's, it's like a marathon of multiple videos that I have to try to figure out if I'm going to put prices on everything. And, uh, it was a, it was a huge bought the entire collection with a huge white, uh, white box of magic cards that I had to sit through. It was basically vintage and legacy bulk. And I found some really cool stuff in there. Um, that I didn't expect I would see in that in that kind of thing and it worked out really good So, you know, thanks for watching my videos and I will see you again